Oh, our next reader and awardee is Teddy Napo, who is our first place winner for ninth and tenth grade fiction. And Teddy is from Lenox Memorial, Memorial and Middle and High School. Congratulations. I wrote this back in February, a short story called Black in the Pink Sky. It is cold. The sun is out. The snow lightly covers the ground. My jacket's half on. It is dirty and it is cold. The soles of my shoes, worn out and old. I carry a brown bag over my shoulder as I walk through the playground. The boy sits on the nearby bench. He calls me over. I'm frightened to walk through the frozen wood chips. Hey, you. Yeah, you black girl. Come over here. Yeah, you. What's your name? Juliet. I'm new here. Nice to meet you. Now go away. I nod and walk across the street towards Lexington. It's a sure thing that no white folks saw us. This boy has shiny penny loafers, a tie in his jacket. His shoes are polished. People like him just don't see people like me. I'm not allowed to walk through the playground. It's a white child ordeal, my mama told me. I do anyway. I'm not allowed to be in my parents' bathroom. I go anyway, staring in the mirror. No one had told me what I look like, but I know. I'm ugly. Home, I am ugly. Public, I am ugly. School, I am ugly. In school, the desks doubled up. I always sit alone. No one to fill the second seat. Until Terry, the new student. The teacher goes off and places a chair next to Charlotte and Alice. Every hand is called on, every question is answered, and every student is filed at. Every student is white, every teacher is white. The students make fun of each other. Oh yeah? Well you love Juliet. One girl taunts a boy who had called her stupid. The class erupts with laughter. Even the teacher gives me a smirk. Terry grows tired of sitting in the chair without a table. The next morning, he sits in the empty desk. When I walk in, astonishment sparks my face. The teacher is even surprised. Terry, she suggests. Why don't you sit in the chair next to Charlotte? I think you'd be more comfortable there. Oh, no, thank you, miss. I like having a desk to my own here. Juliet, what the hell is the matter with you? Sit down. I sit down slowly next to Terry, fearing, fearing what would happen next. Did you get number three? I couldn't figure it out last night. Did you get it? But what? I'm barely able to breathe. Number three. I couldn't figure it out. The house is cold, damp, and his rooms are dark. There's one stove in the basement. Over the basement, there are two beds and one room. One for Mama and Daddy, and one for me. The wood floors creak, and scratches cover the faces of the walls. The school is new. Maps cover the blackboards, and an American flag rises above the teacher's desk. I'm sure Terry will not sit next to me again. He surely now understands that I will not talk to him. Terry sits, smiles, and then pulls out a pencil and paper. Isn't Juliet a white girl's name? Her parents are too stupid to name her correctly, Joey yells in a snarky voice. Yeah, my mama likes, uh, whatever his name is, Shakespeare. Oh, I see. I sit alone at the lunch table every day. My table is only one chair, and it is mine. I finish my apple and my milk. I look down at my skinny brown legs and lose track and go into a gaze. I'm so ugly. My mama love each other. My mama and dad love each other. Hey, Juliet. I keep my eyes on her legs, scared. I've heard those words before at the lunch table. I hear the sound of the chair being pulled out. My head looks at my skinny thigh as I glance up. What do you want? Well, I was sitting with the other boys, and then I finished my food, so I thought I'd just come say hi. Oh. Where are the other black kids? It's, uh, well, it's just me, I remember. Oh. Now, can you please go away? I was thinking about something. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Well, you did. Bye now. He got up slowly. You know, I noticed that you had no friends, and I thought that just maybe you might even just want one. For a moment, I look at his face. His blue eyes remind me of Mama's porcelain china. His hair is short, light brown, parted halfway, and his lips are pink. The bottom one began to tremble. He is handsome. My daddy came home late last night. I saw him steal three dollars from Mama's pocketbook this morning. It hurts my heart to know what he bought with that money. I dare not move. Fear of him screaming my name in a slurred, somber voice. Fear of him, mo fear of moving, for then I might find one cold inch in my bed. Mama lays down and leap while my daddy is in the bathroom. Mama pretends to sleep. I saw the position before. She fears him more than I do. My daddy sits on the bed and makes the bed cricket. Open my eyes for one second I saw him on top of her. I'm not unsure of what I saw, but I know Mama still pretends to sleep. Every morning I walk across Lexington and stare up at the tall Chrysler building. Mama says it's taller than God's heaven, but I don't know how cars be sold there. 
too many floors. I see Mr. Gables riding his bicycle. He gives me a smile and calls me Miss Josie Baker. Today I see Mr. Gables. He winks and says, Miss Josephine, how are we doing all this winter morning? Good, sir, I giggled. We'll get you up to school, Missy. Mr. Gables said out of the side of his mouth. Mr. Gables is a milk chocolate skinny man. He has one front missing two. Soft brown eyes with a skip in his step. He never misses a step. My chair behind my desk is gray and has marks on it. Words carved into it. This chair belonged to the last neighbor that went to the school, Joey told me. Terry's chair next to mine is tan, clean, and untouched by anyone. I walk in and see Terry sitting in my chair. Get out of my seat! I thought you just might like a change, just for today, he said, as, he said with a smile that I'm suspicious of. Juliet, what the hell is the matter with you? Sit in your proper seat and shut up! Miss Murphy yelled. Miss Murphy is a young woman, curvy, with no wedding ring. She wears nothing but dresses and heels. She is a beautiful woman. I said, get in your proper seat. Don't you listen? Smacking me across the face and pushing my note papers and pencil off the desk. Miss, I took her seat. Right before she arrived, Terry replied quickly. Well, why the hell did you do that? Because, cause ain't good enough. Now get up and switch chairs. No, ma'am. What was that? I'm not moving. Mama is a loving woman. My dad is a grown man. Mama's first love is her collection of china. The china is beautiful porcelain. The porcelain, old, slightly cracked with the beautiful blue paint spackled on the surface. The porcelain's teapot was elephant-like. The, the spout was elephant-like. Mama calls it the glands cock of the teapot. Every Sunday at noon, Mama takes out the china from the good antique cabinet and washes it and then polishes it good. Mama loves antiques. She goes into every antique store she sees. Never buys nothing, though. Mama quotes this poem she keeps saying all the time. When I was one in twenty, I would have all the antiques I wanted. Mama's second love is, is music. Miss Billy Holiday, she'd be singing all the time. Someday he'll come along, the men I love. He'll be big and strong, the men I love. Mama's voice is rough. The voice is soft, with smooth soul. Mama's voice is feminine, with a lovely skip. Mama's voice is the slowest timbre. I love Mama's voice. And so all else above, I'll be dreaming of the men I love. I've not been touched in many weeks. I've not touched no one. No one's been touching me. Mama never lay her hand, never lay her hands on me, never to give me a hug. My daddy never runs his fingers through my tangled hair. No one gets hold of my hand, ever. No one laughs at my jokes and it touches my hand when they laugh. Terry and my feet never touch under the desks. Terry walked me home that day. Terry tells me that he, he has new friends here, but not many. Yeah, the other boys and I are getting along, but they're not that great. Uh-huh, tell me about it. I watch my feet take each step on the gray sidewalk. Careful not to step in the cracks. So, uh, where do you live? Terry asked. Just a, just a few more blocks down, he <coughs> said. We passed my house already, but we just keep on walking. We passed Lexington Avenue. And, uh, the crosswalk is wet and crowded. An old white man gives us a mean look as we pass Dylan's candy shop. For some reason, Terry just keeps on walking and we just keep on talking. No mean looks or nothing. Second Avenue and then first. And then Terry and I walk towards the East River. We stop three and a half feet from the edge of the dock. I look at the water and I see the ripples in the water. We see the small tugboat go by and then we wave to him. Terry puts his arm around my waist and he pulls me closer to him. And then I start to cry. He pulls me closer. I rest my head on his shoulder as I, heard, as I felt the tears run down my cheek. I saw them fall into the river one by one. Mm -hmm.